Hello and welcome. Today, in this video, we shall take a look at how we should write an essay. My name is Zahir Zakaria, and before I begin uh, the day's lecture, I would like to put on record my indebtedness for Ramanujan's Institute for Competitive Exams. Uh, they are a trusted name today in training civil services and competitive examination aspirants for various competitive examinations. Uh, on the screen, you can see the number and you can get in touch with the team Ramanujans for any kinds of doubt, queries or clarifications. And we would love to hear from you. So let us begin today's video lecture. As I said, we shall look into how we should write an essay. Now this essay is included in various competitive examinations in UPSC, APSC mains, and even in TPSC and in other competitive examinations as well. So how should you write an essay to get the maximum benefit in that paper? Uh, this is what we are going to discuss today. Not only today in a series of lectures that will be coming up soon. This is the first of that series. So stay on, watch the video and I hope it will benefit you. So it would be useful for us to know at the very outset what exactly is an essay. Uh, you might want to ask now what would be the benefit in knowing what is an essay? We all know what an essay is. Many of us have probably written an essay during our high school exams. You might remember some of the favorite topics uh, that were marked off as important by our teachers during our metric exams. So what is the point in knowing what is an essay? Uh, well, there is a point in knowing an essay. First of all, uh, we have to understand that in a civil service examination or one of these competitive examinations, uh, the standard that they are expecting is definitely going to be higher than the high school standard that we are used to. And when we understand what is an essay, exactly understand clearly what is an essay and also therefore understand what an essay is not, it will give us a clear understanding uh, about things that we can include in our essay and how to better the essay so that we can get maximum benefits in our paper. So very simply, as you know, an essay is a non-fictional composition. Uh, it is a short formal piece of writing dealing with a single subject. Uh, piece of writing that expresses the author's view on a subject. These are these three points uh, more or less clear the cloud on what an essay is. But there are some things that are hidden within these three sentences that we need to focus on. First of all, remember that an essay is non-fictional. Oftentimes what happens is that many students lose out their marks in essay examinations because when they go to the uh, exam hall, often with very little preparation, uh, because the word limit is 1,200, 1,500, uh, it's an open-ended question. Many people are prone to thinking, okay, if I've got good no language skills, I will write some, a, a few points from my own thinking, and that should do. Remember this term, non-fictional composition, you see, uh, writing entirely from your speculations and from your estimations uh, threatens to actually go against this sacrosanct uh, point about an essay. Uh, I would say a very integral part, the most integral uh, part of what an essay is actually. It is its basic characteristics, its basic feature is that it is non-fictional. So, when you are putting in your speculations, if your speculations are not backed by facts, then writing such essays is actually useless. Then the second thing, it is formal piece of writing. This is another mistake that people or students tend to make when they don't go with sufficient preparation. An essay is a formal piece of writing, which means that the language used in the essay has to be formal. And that formal language comes to us not just like that, because when we are speaking to some, somebody or we're just having a talk with our friends or people we know, that language is not very formal. But in an essay, 
we expect that the language of the essay should be formal. So for that, you will need uh, reading, a lot of reading, a good vocabulary, and a knowledge of formal language. The third point is that this is, of, this is a frequently asked question. Can I present my views in the essay? The answer is, of course, you should, because an essay is a very personal piece of writing. And when we read an essay, we are basically interested in knowing the author's view on that subject. So definitely you should express your own views. But expressing your own views has a way in which things should be expressed. There are ways in which you can express yourself uh, and there are ways in which you should not express yourselves. So what are those ways that also you need to know so that you are able to write a good essay. Uh, now, why do we write essays? Now, again, why is this question so important? We, why do we write essays? We write essays to pass examination. Well, if that is the answer, then there are other ways to pass examinations as well. There can be other question types as well. Why do your examiners want you to write an essay? Uh, the answer to this question is that uh, when you write an essay, and only when you write an essay, your examiners get an opportunity to evaluate certain things about you, which other forms of evaluation, say suppose an oral uh, examination or suppose a multi-choice question will not provide the examiner with. So what really do essays help your examiners understand this? If you understand the uh, thoroughly the answer to this question, you will be able to get under the skin of your examiner and be able to think from the shoes of your examiner. That will give you a perspective. You will understand what the examiner wants from you. And if you understand what the examiner wants from you, you will be able to give the examiner exactly that. And naturally, you'll score better. Uh, so here on your screen, you can see the first point is that essays are given to students because they help in understanding, uh, in help, help in the process of learning and in understanding. Remember, these three points that you see on your screen have been provided by Maureen Fitzgerald from the Anglia Polytechnic University in UK. And she is giving these, the answers to these questions <coughs> from the point of view of uh, a student. From a point of view from uh, the students, why students in the UK universities and schools are expected to write, you know, essays. So, but although it is from that point of view, you can also get a few, pick up some hints First of all, she says that uh, understanding the um, in writing an essay increases your understanding and helps in the process of learning. Exactly how? So here, you see, I've listed it. Uh, it is part of this discussion only that I've listed it separately here. How does writing an essay benefit your understanding and help in the process of learning? You see, when you have to write an essay, you have to do a good amount of research. You have to read a lot of things. You have to source information, mine information, and then you have to make critical judgments. Now, what critical judgments? When you read on a topic, you will come across a lot of resources. You'll come across a lot of facts. And then you have to make that judgment based upon your question. You have to make the call. Which are the points I should include? Which are the points I should leave out for this essay? So these critical judgments are very important. So those judgments will actually uh, make your essay better than others or as good as others or worse than others. So those critical judgments are very important. So that is how it helps in the process of learning. And this point also tells you why you should keep practicing your essay right from the word go when you have decided to practice for you know decided to write your civil service examination even though essay writing is in the mains examination why you should start preparing for your essay paper way before it this is one more hint here if you want to learn about the various topics practice writing essays because when you start writing essays when you pick you know pick up subjects from pick up questions on essays from various subjects you will do a good amount of reading. And when you do a good amount of reading and you put the information down on an essay, you will see your learning becomes quite deep and very solid as well. Uh, it of course develops your writing skill. It uh, gives you the practice of how to write persuasively. 
clearly and by organizing your thoughts. You see, it seems very easy to write down an essay, but if you ever have tried to write an essay, you will see that if you have got little or no practice, coming up with a 1000 or 1500 word essay is not a child's play. You need to have some skills, really develop skills, uh, skills that where you are able to write clearly and you are able to convince others by your writing. Uh, and also you are able to put your thoughts in a logical sequence. And all those comes when you are able to write a good essay. And what does it give your tutors or your evaluators uh, with? It provides your evaluators with the insight into your depth of learning. So by reading your essay, your evaluators are able to gauge your depth of learning. So if you are not a very well-read person, the moment somebody reads your essay, the person will be able to make out that your knowledge on that particular issue is very superficial. And at least APSC and other boards as well mention it very clearly that absolutely no marks will be provided for superficial learning. So moving on, uh, you see, if you want to know who are the great essayists in literature, these are some of the uh, great essayists. Francis Bacon is one of the earliest essayists of English literature. In his essays, you'll find a very useful technique. It is called aphorisms. And what are aphorisms? I've given you an example also here. Aphorism basically, uh, you will find if you read Francis Bacon's essay, you will see that he has got that capacity to pack a lot of ideas into short, crisp and very lively sentences. So if you expand one of these sentences, you can write a whole essay or maybe a booklet on that. So this art of being able to compress your ideas, compress a lot of ideas, many ideas into short crisp sentences are known as aphorisms. So you can read Francis Bacon's essays for that. Charles Lamb is again a very, very lively essayist. You have Bertrand Russell, one of the greatest minds of the 20th century. You can read his essays if you want to, uh, uh, if you are interested in social, political, moral subjects, then he, he is the man you should read. Uh, Robert Lin's essays, of course, are also very famous and he's famous just after Charles Lamb. Charles Lamb is famously known as the uh, prince among essayists. And after Charles Lamb, Robert Lin is perhaps the second most popular essayist in English literature. Uh, there are, of course, other essayists also. I have uh, not named all of them here, but some of the famous ones. If you are interested, you can read their essays. It will help you to increase your vocabulary and it will also give you an uh, insight into how to structure essays uh, nicely. Uh, now let us get into some things that, will, that are of great interest to you. Parts of an essay. Well, an essay contains three parts. There is the introduction part, there is the body or the principal arguments part and the conclusion. Uh, now let us look at how to write an introduction to the essay. Uh, you might say, okay, what is there to learn how to write an introduction? But my dear friend, if you have ever tried to write an essay, you will, uh, you will realize that uh, beginning the essay is the most difficult part. Once you start writing, once you have written 10 sentences, it is fairly easy to just continue. But exactly how should I begin? Where should I begin? What should I begin with? That is the most crucial judgment you have to make. And these are some of the techniques in which you can start the introduction of an essay. Remember, the introduction is one paragraph only, one long paragraph, maybe half a page, that should be enough. So one paragraph, half a page long is your introduction. And how should you begin your introduction? These are the techniques that are given on your screen. The, if you are if you have just gone blank and you have got nothing you know nothing is coming to your head a very good way to start your essay is to rephrase the statement given in the question i will give you an example later on so first let us name these three techniques the first way is just make the first sentence should be a rephrasing of the statement given in the question then immediately put a concession now what is a concession you will see when you read the question in an essay you will understand that the essay is trying to make uh, or trying to advocate one idea. A concession is the reverse idea. So you put a sentence in which the uh, 
in which your concession sentence goes against the idea of the statement in the question and then after that go for the third sentence which provides a counter, counter argument to the concession that is again you have become in agreement with the question so if using these techniques you can start off you can start writing your essays uh, you can start writing the introduction of your essay let me give you an example and it will become a little more clear to you look at the following question the question is the benefits of the internet to education if you read this question you will see the question is giving you some hints the question is telling you that yes internet is beneficial to education now how do we start writing the introduction i told you remember the first thing if you can do nothing else the first thing is to rephrase the statement of the question and that is exactly what we have done in the first sentence see the internet is very beneficial to education right so i've just rephrased it the second sentence you see many people would argue that the internet is not very beneficial to education this is an example of a concession in this sentence you will see you have gone against what is being said in the statement of the question you've gone against many people would argue that the internet is not very beneficial to education this is a con concession and after the concession you have to follow it up with a counter argument to the concession that is you have to go back to agree with the question so now you see what we have done but the truth is that the technology helps people to gain education easily cost effectively and quickly it opens up many sources of gathering information several books and essays and even audio visual learning has become possible due to the internet hence the benefits of the internet to education cannot be overstated now uh, so several books and essays and even this point of course i mean, meant to say that several books and essays and audio visual learn, learning has uh, it is it is possible to get access these things due to the internet quickly and efficiently so you see using these three techniques you have constructed this introduction to the essay so if you have gone blank then you can use these three techniques and it will help you now the next uh, part is to decide what to write in the body how should we build the body remember the body is the main part of the essay it is the main part of the essay and remember the body uh, is the longest part of the essay and the body part can contain more than one paragraphs two three paragraphs as per your wish and as per your requirements you can have as many paragraphs in the body as you need now while writing the body remember understand the expectation of the question very thoroughly what does the question expect of you that will give you a hint then you have to bank on your reading now that is where your editorial discussion come in comes in very handy all right so all the readings that you have done all the readings that you have done will now come to help you if you have done little reading it will not it's not going to serve your purpose organize your thoughts what should you say what should you not say decide on what you don't want to include that point is very important if when you get in get a topic for writing an essay and you have done some reading you know what you should include but it is very important to decide which are the points you don't want to include or which are the points you just want to touch and go so this is what you do in the body uh so what should the body part include how should you write the body part you know that the body part you should write the body part is the longest part of the essay it can have more than one paragraph uh, you can so you should bank on your reading so after banking on your reading what really you, would you want to put into this essay remember i told you that an essay is very personal we want to know your opinion in this body part you should include statistics facts and quotations and these three things should back up your opinion on the body paragraphs right so suppose let us going back to our example internet is beneficial to education if you are saying that internet has made educational education more accessible to people then your you have to quote statistics facts and quotations from your reading uh, which supports the fact that uh, internet has actually made education accessible you might want to suppose give facts and figures from a remote country or a remote part of a country 
where internet has made education possible, which would not be possible without, without the internet or which was not possible before the internet days. Uh, now, after having known these things, do you want to try, one, try writing an essay? Uh, in your examination, you are expected to write 1000 to 1500 words. But why don't you do one thing and this will help us build a relationship between us. us. So do one thing, write a 500 word essay on any of these two topics. The first topic is the hurdles to online education in India. And the second topic is to R is human, to forgive is divine. These are the two topics. Why don't you try to write a 500 word essay and you know, you can mail it to us. The email will be provided to you. I will uh, provide the email to you. And in the description box also there are, we will include uh, the mail address to which you can reach us out. Uh, why don't you give it a try? Try writing a 500 word essay and we will definitely get back to you, uh, give you the feedback on this, on your essays. And in the next uh, lecture, I will give you some more tips and hints on how you can better your writing skills. So I hope you have watched the entire video and I do hope that it will, it has been of some help to you. Please comment on the comment boxes, please. Uh, uh, we shall wait to hear your feedback and this here on your screen, you can see my email ID. Uh, you can also see the number at which you can contact Ramanujan's Institute. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And again, I, as before I go away, I will tell you this, that we are eagerly waiting for your feedback to help us make more such videos for you. Thank you very much for watching.